Okay, this video is about um, loops and um, a simple introduction to functions, um, which are one of the more advanced uh, techniques that we use in coding. Um, in particular, um, this video is about loops. So loops are a way to do the same thing multiple times. And um, we've already been doing some simple loops where you calculate the mean of a whole bunch of columns, or you create the summary for several subgroups. Um, we've done the thing where we've tried different tuning parameters. Um, we haven't done much of simulation, which is of course a big topic in computer science right now. But the idea is a loop is just a way to do things lots and lots of times. Now, if you really wanna know more about loops, you really should take a computer science course because in statistics, typically what we do is we avoid loops. So um, when you hear people talk about um, loops and you hear people talk about R, one of the weaknesses people will say R has is that it's actually not very efficient at loops. It's slower than a lot of other software packages when you write loops. And the answer that the R people give or the R studio people give is that if you're writing loops, you probably aren't building your question the right way because vectorized functions are actually much faster. Anyway, let's talk about loops a little bit the way that you would talk about them in a computer class. Um, so, um, oops, that's a slide I already needed. Um, so again, we have these true loop commands that we're gonna talk about, but then we're gonna do vectorized commands or we're gonna use apply and map to create vectorized commands. And then there are some commands that do it for you and summarize is the one we've talked about a lot about that. Anyway, let's talk about for while and repeat. So if you're in any kind of computer science or coding class at all, um, learning the three kinds of loops is actually one of the things that they'll spend a fair uh, bit of time on. Um, and so if you took CS 170 or 180 or um, whichever your favorite uh, computer science class is. And the difference is, is how loops stop. So a for loop says specifically do this many circles. So it says from one uh, four um, some index of so four I equals one to 20. And that means it's gonna go through it 20 times because as it loops back, it's gonna move that counter up one number. So it'll do it 20 times. Um, you know, so if you had columns with numbers in them, you could say use column I in your code and that would uh, do a for loop. A for loop is probably the most common kind of loop that you'd see in an introductory um, CS class. While and repeat loops, on the other hand, look for conditions. So they repeat until something happens to make them change. So um, a while loop starts by checking the condition. If the condition is uh, false, you stop. If it's true, then you do some stuff um, and then you loop back and you keep going until it ends, that the condition has changed. A repeat is similar. The difference is, is that repeat always stop, starts first. So it does the thing first, then it checks the condition at the end. And so these two are really brothers um, in the sense of how they work. And so again, um, we can imagine um, getting uh, loops that will do lots and lots of uh, nice things for us. And um, even um, you can imagine the uh, tuning thing we did, the tuning CV, right? That would take the sequence of numbers and we could either set it so that we had that sequence created. So it went 01, 03, 05, 07 or whatever, and then it stopped. Or we could do the um, like cart, that command keeps making trees until the difference between uh, making another split is small enough that we don't care. And uh, so that's a kind of a repeat that it always starts with a split and then it goes until it stops. I guess it might be that it could not split at all. Then your tree would not be a tree, it would be a dot. Um, anyway, um, all three of those commands are built into R. So if we did four, I is in one to five, remember the colon is one through, um, and then just print that lists our numbers one to five. That's a pretty boring example. Um, a more interesting one might be um, if we make a sequence like we did before, so x vec is just an x vector, um, it starts at zero and goes up to two pi by 0.01. Then we make a y vec, and one of the weird things in coding is that sometimes you have to make an empty variable so that you can use it later. Um, and then in our for, what we do is we say for all the x values that are in x vec, so that's the same as saying go from zero to two pi by 0.01, um, calculate the cosine of it. 
And you know, in stats, we don't use cosines very often, but you know, you remember what it is. And so y is the cosine, and then yvec just gets that value. So we're going to add a column to yvec for that number. Then it repeats through all the different x's. Um, and when it's done, you'll have a yvec that's filled with values because each time through, we're adding those values to it. Then we can make a data frame out of our xvec and our yvec, and now we can plot it. And so, boom, we've plotted um, lines. One reason I think this is a cool chart, even though, you know, I know trig is, might not be your favorite thing, is that even though these are dots, even at 0.01 going from 0 to 2 pi, 6 point, whatever that is, 2, 8, um, it looks smooth. So, you know, one of the important things, if you ever take calculus, is that connection between discrete and continuous things. And what you can see here is even at this level, with this very simple function we wrote, it already looks like a smooth curve, even though it's really just a set of dots. Okay, so vectorized functions, which like I said, is how R tends to deal with this, is that instead of um, writing the loop explicitly, we instead have commands that will do it for us. So, um, Simply put, most math commands that you put into R will work on a vector the same as they'll work on a single number. So if we make an x vec, which is just one, two, and three, and we square it, it'll just square all three numbers, boom, boom, boom. If we take the cosine of that vector, boom, 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 it calculates those three values. We could take it then to the extreme and say, well, go from zero to two pi, so 6.28, so that means there's 628 numbers. And then instead of doing that, uh, code like we did here with the for loop, we just run the cosine command on the vector. And what that means is it piecewise does the cosine to each element in our data. Then we can still make our data frame and plot it, and you can see we get the same uh, graph both times. Okay. Um, like I said, typically in R, we try to avoid loops when we can because they're faster. Um, in that sense of self-documenting, I think typically this is easier to kind of understand instead of looking at the uh, loop language, which, you know, I think people who code all the time that might be easier for, but for most normal folks, um, that's a little bit easier. And again, that's one of the places where statistics people and computer science people kind of disagree when we're talking about data science. That if you use a software like C++ or Python, which again are fantastic great languages, they're multi-purpose languages, so they don't just do stats. Um, there, it's often much faster to write the loops. Um, and so, um, you know, a difference in how we might write things up are that the stat people would tend to use these vectorized functions and the CS people might tend to use loops. Now, as we talk about these languages, I think I've mentioned before that the languages can call each other. So some of tidyverse commands are actually written in C++ and it runs behind the scenes where you don't see it. Similarly, if you're coding in C++, you can actually call R commands from within it. So um, some of the fancier coders can get uh, both things, you know, kind of the best of both worlds as they write. Um, so um, the next thing that's going on is that we can write our own commands that do these vectorized functions. So um, the command that's inside tidyverse is called map. And so map um, just takes a command and applies it to a vector. So you can see here, here's xvec, here's our pipe, and we just do map of cosine. So what that does is that applies the cosine to each element in here. And again, we don't need that for cosine, but it does the same thing. What is sort of interesting about map is that by default, it returns a list. So instead of making a data frame that we can use, um, it uh, returns a list, which is sort of funny. So typically map underscore double is more what we do. Remember double is one of the kinds of numbers. It's just, you know, it's decimals. Um, and so we can create it like that. Um, map has a bunch of different varieties and you can look on that uh, tidyverse page to get the full set of them but basically the thing after the underscore is what you want your output to look like so map underscore character gives you a vector of characters here that would be kind of goofy but if you were making you know some sort of text analysis or something character might be exactly what you want 
Now, that's map really simple, but you can very quickly make pretty complicated things using map, building on the stuff we've already used. Because it is part of the tidyverse, you can put it into a pipe chain a lot like summarize to do things like that. So, um, tilde is just the way we put it in that we're going to put a function, and then you just put the function after it. And dot x is just the thing you remember to be the thing that you're sticking in. So, if we took that vector one, two, three, and we did map double, and we did tilde dot x squared, again, we don't need to do that because we can just square the vector directly. Um, but as a quick example, it works. It makes the double, um, the squared value of each of them, one squared is one, two squared is two. We can then start to make fancier functions like x squared plus cosine x. And again, we use that dot x um, to specifically mean that it's uh, the numbers from our vector that we start with. And so here's you know, whatever those values are. Again, um, it's pretty easy to start making more complicated things. Um, for instance, if you took our numbers, um, our sequence of numbers, and then we made a vector of just one, two, three, now we can start to be fancier and say, take k and now plot our x using our cosine function. So what we've done is we've now made three plots so instead of making three plots, cosine x, cosine of 2x, cosine of 3x, we've now just used that um, vector of just three numbers to do that. And again, you could totally imagine a situation where that's a thing that you want to do. Um, next up um, is just the idea that you could use it within a plot um, more specifically. This was the simple plot. But here you can do it inside of ggplot. So now we can map ggplot. So what we've done is we've selected all this, the variables other than species and we've just made histograms of all four vectors. So it's kind of a quick way to make panel plots as well. For four variables, maybe making that original panel like we did with gather might work better. But it would be easy to imagine you had 100 of them you're going to make. Um, in that case, map would be way faster. Um, and then you could start to add fancier things like um, you could add the color for the species, you could add, you know, whatever kind of extra variables that you wanted to add uh, to this. Um, like I said, um, a lot of these things are built into other commands. So like tune RF, random forest, cart, all have these loops built into them through the vectorized function. So you don't even have to think about how it's doing it. Um, and, um, yeah, so again, in conclusion, loops are fantastic when you're coding. When you're doing uh, data science, they're sometimes not so fantastic. So if you do want to learn more about coding loops, I'm sorry that this isn't the class that teaches it to you, but um, certainly they're worth learning for other coding applications, certainly databases um, and web applications use loops all the time to do awesome and amazing things. And, um, and in fact, uh, video game animation is just a series of loops where over time you're doing more and more things. So um, again, but in data science, we typically don't use them so much. And instead, we either use um, these built-in vectorized functions, we create our own vectorized commands, or we use things like summarize that do it for us.